I got it. <laughs> and so James chapter 2, verse number 19, to get started. Amen. James chapter 2, verse 19, it says, Thou believest mm -hmm. that there is one God, thou doest well. Mm -hmm. The devils also believe and tremble. Mm -hmm. Thou believest that there is one God, Apostle James says, you do well, you do well. I applaud you. Kudos to you. But let me tell you something. The devils also believe. And not only do they believe, but they tremble. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so what the Lord laid on our hearts tonight to share with the people of God is this. If devils believe, then what's wrong with us? Wow. If devils believe. If the devils believe. And what's wrong with us who are believers? So we thank you, Father. We bless you now for what you're going to say, how you're going to move in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Oh. Glory to God. I'm excited to uh, share this. What's wrong with believers? We're going to get some revelation tonight. Now, I'm going to read this one more time. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Now, I want you to look at Isaiah chapter 66, verses 1 and 2 as well. And it says, thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne. This mm -hmm. is God mm -hmm. speaking. And the earth is my footstool. Mm -hmm. Where is the house that ye build unto me? Right. And where's the place of my rest? Mm -hmm. He says, for all those things, <laughs> all those things have mine hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look. Watch this now. To this man, this is the type of man, mm -hmm. this is the type of woman, this is the type of son or daughter I'm looking for in the earth right now. Even to him that is poor. Now, poor doesn't mean on welfare. Poor means humble. So God is looking for an humble and someone who is humble and of a contrite. For years, I didn't know what contract meant. I, met, I read it in a you know, uh, David talked about it in the Psalms. You know, he mentioned contrite. But what is contrite? It means repentant, remorseful, regretful, mm -hmm. or penitent. So when you have a repentant, remorseful, regretful heart mm -hmm. and trembleth at my word. Oh, my God. Mm. Wow. This is the type of believer that God is looking for. One who is humble and of a contrite or repentant, remorseful, regretful heart and trembling at his word. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. So we're going to get into some things tonight. And so we're talking about once again, if devils believe, then what's wrong with us? Now, I really believe that one of the most overlooked revelations by saints is concerning the fact that both Satan and devils know the truth, truth that's right. about God and Jesus. That's it. I know that's a mouthful. That's it. But let me say that again. That's why. One of the most overlooked, and I say I emphasize overlooked revelations by saints is concerning the fact that both Satan and devils or demons know the truth about God 
and Jesus Christ mm -hmm. whom God sent. Mm -hmm. Now, devils or demons know that God is their creator. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine that? Devils, demons know that God is their creator. Mm -hmm. Not only that, Satan knows that God created him. Think about that, prophet. That's, that's deep. Satan knows that God created him and named him Lucifer. He knows what his name was before his name got changed. Mm -hmm. so he knew his name was Lucifer before he fell and became Satan everybody mm -hmm. see that so listen to this revelation now see the devil knows that God is real mm -hmm. yet he lies to humanity mm -hmm. and tells them that Jesus isn't real right make believe Made this is this is a you know some of the uh, Hebrew Israelites they say this this white man's religion. Mm. Now I ain't no wrote, white man wrote this word. The word says that 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 all scripture is given by inspiration, meaning it's, meaning it's God breathed. So white man, black man, purple man didn't think of this. Holy men of God were inspired as they they were unctioned by the Holy Spirit. So this is not. Jesus Christ, a fictitious figment of our imagination. But this is what the devil tells people. Jesus isn't real. And not only is he not real, but he, he never existed. My God. Now you got Jewish historians who talk about Jesus, but yet the devil says Jesus never existed. <laughs> and some people are believing it. Now, look at this. Look at the definition of a lie. A lie is a false statement. And I have this in a book I've written that we're going to get published uh, before summer called Established Lies. I give the definition in the book of a lie is a false statement. Deliberately spoken with the intent to deceive. So a lie is a false statement, and that false statement is deliberately spoken with the intent to deceive the person who believes the lie. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. This is going to get good tonight. This is the level we're going to be teaching on. So when you look at the definition of a lie, a false statement deliberately spoken with the intent to deceive. Contextually speaking, watch this now, based on the context I just used this in, a liar can't be an official liar without knowing the truth first. Wow. Isn't that good, Prophet? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A liar cannot officially be a liar yeah. without knowing the yeah. truth yeah. first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A liar has to have something to deviate from. Mm -hmm. The liar has to have something to tweak in order to tell a half truth, right. which is a whole lie. Oh, somebody need to get that. <laughs> so a liar can't be an official liar without knowing the truth first. Mm -hmm. Now listen, the person who is the recipient of the lie is classified or categorized as deceived, deceived mm -hmm. <laughs> and does not know the truth. However, the originator of the lie knows the truth, but purposely spoke that which was false. Mm -hmm. Are you listening to me tonight? So this, this is going to get uh, really good tonight. So I want you to think about that definition again. So how could Lucifer formerly be an anointed cherub? I want you to see how stupid this mm -hmm. is now. Come on now. Lucifer formerly being an anointed cherub. An anointed cherub, right? In the presence of God, in charge of worship in heaven, 
and not believe that the one whom he was worshiping existed. Mm. No, he believed. <laughs> he believed. He believed. I just believe that um, because he know the power that mm. worship has. Mm -hmm. That's why he tries so hard to stop the worship. See, that's what yes. he's after. Mm -hmm. Worship was meant to be exclusively God. Exactly. And after he saw what worship can do. Yes. Oh, he wanted it. He wanted it. He wanted it. I got to get some of this. So think about that. The devil is not wondering if God is real. No, 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 no. Because he was he, he was in his presence. He was the worshiper. Mm -hmm. The scripture says in Ezekiel, he had pipes in him, man. He was mm -hmm. a one-man band. He had it going on. That's why so much hell is in choirs, in churches. Well, the devil is jealous now because we have his job. Hmm. You want to find some mess, go to choir rehearsal. There's always something going on in the choirs. He always want to create mess because when you're talking about ushering in the presence of God, he knows mm -hmm. that we have his job now. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that some mess is always going on mm -hmm. on the praise team or in the mm -hmm. choir or mm -hmm. amongst the band, the musician mm -hmm. band. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He always wants yeah. some kind of mess to be going on. To keep yeah. confusion because the word says where there's envying and strife, there there's is confusion mm -hmm. and every evil work. Mm -hmm. So here's the thing you have to understand. The devil was not worshiping many gods when he was in heaven. Let me help somebody tonight. The Lucifer knew he was worshiping the one the true and the living God. Now, the devil is not omniscient, meaning that he is an all knowledge. That's what omniscient means. All knowledge. Omniscient. All knowledge. So God is all knowledge. Not only does God have all knowledge, he is all knowledge. Mm -hmm. Everybody see the difference there? So, so the devil is not all knowledge as God is, and he does not know everything. Follow me now. So nevertheless, he does not know, but but let me say it like this. He does know that God is real. He does. He does. <laughs> and that there is only one true God. Now following, you know, my wife already said it. Lucifer wasn't worshiping many gods. He was in the presence of the one true and living God, and he saw how powerful the worship was. Mm. He said, man, I, I need some of this action now. Mm. I need to redirect this worship I'm giving God and have it directed to me. Mm. So mm -hmm. I got to deceive some folk in order to get this accomplished. But he knew the truth. But he knew the truth. So he planned how he was going to tell the lie deliberately to deceive. And thus the so lie was created. Yep. Yeah. So he knew the truth. That's why he created a lie. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, somebody get that in a moment. It's going to get good tonight, I'm telling you, brothers and sisters. Amen. Satan, as my wife already said, wants the worship that is exclusively due to God. Mm -hmm. Let's look at Matthew chapter 4. Verses uh, 8 through 10. Want to read that for me, prophetess? I got it ready. Matthew chapter 4, verses 8 through 10. Now, I really, really, really know Jesus was humble because he let Satan offer him what he created. Oh, my God. Go ahead and read it, baby. <laughs> okay, so um, Matthew 4, verse 8 says, mm -hmm. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And said unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Now, you imagine Satan is offering Jesus 
what Jesus created before the world began. <laughs> hmm. He said, all these kingdoms, I will give unto you what? What's the catch 22? If you would worship me, fall if down. If you would worship me. Fall down and worship me. Bow down and fall down and worship me. Verse 10. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan. Why? For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. So, the God, the creator of the universe, Elohim, El Elyon, the most high God, is the only one mm -hmm. worthy to be worshipped. That's right. And he's the one that is to be served. Not Satan. Everybody see that? Mm -hmm. So, therefore, Satan lies to humans in order to have the worship from them, which is exclusively due to God, mm -hmm. redirected mm -hmm. to him. Now, this is why the whole anti-Christ system's agenda is based on. This is what it's based on. Mm -hmm. To influence the world to worship Satan and treat him as the true and the living God. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's what this whole anti-Christ spirit is all about. And I have right here, you can see this dollar, if I put it up here, if I put it up here, this dollar here. On the back of the dollar bill, this is uh, Novus Ordo Seclora. And that stands for New World Order. And that if, if you have get time looking at the dollar bill, you'll see on the top, it's an all-seeing eye. Mm -hmm. And that represents Lucifer. Now, the steps, you look going up the pyramid, those steps symbolize the plans that the Illuminati and the powers that be have for or that they're going to take in order to secure that Lucifer gets on the top of the pyramid and be worshipped as God. So Lucifer would be as God is. The Antichrist will be as the Lord Jesus Christ is. Everybody see that? Mm -hmm. So this is the objective of the Antichrist system to get Satan in position to be on the top of that pyramid and be worshipped by all of humanity. That's what the New World Order is about. I'm not teaching on that. I just wanted to uh, give that to you free. Now, what's the real deal that's going on? So let's look at why devils believe in trouble. And I know this is going to help somebody. Look at Colossians chapter 1, verses 12 through 17. Colossians chapter 1, verses 12 through 17. Welcome to Zoom tonight. God bless you there. Look at what it says. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us or transferred us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption, that's talking about us, those who repent and have received Christ through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. So we don't have to worry if your sins are forgiven. He's already forgiven mm -hmm. every mm -hmm. sin. Mm -hmm. You committed and every sin that you will commit. Who is the image, verse 15, of the invisible, invisible God. God? He's the image. He's the exact replica. Mm -hmm. You want to know what the Father is like? Look at the Son. Mm -hmm. Look at the son's character. You'll know what God's character is like. The mm -hmm. father. Everybody see that? Mm -hmm. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Watch this. For by him, this is what I want to get to. By him were all, all things, things created. created. Hold on now. Who is him? It's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ contextually. Not just God the Father, it's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ in this context. Everybody see that? For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, 
visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions, watch this, or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Oh my God. Look at 17. And he is before all things. And by him, all things. all things consist. Now, what does consist mean? In this context, it means held together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So all things are held together by the Lord. Oh, my mm -hmm. God. That's good, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Look at verse 18. And he is the head of the body, the church. Mm -hmm. That's why we call it the body of Christ. Mm -hmm who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Ooh, that's deep, isn't it? That's good. Ooh, my God. So what am I saying to you tonight, brothers and sisters? Principalities and powers know that God is their creator. That's right. Think about that, Providence. Well, it's, it's, and, and I, and I think, I think that is what has happened to us over the, the, the years mm -hmm. that the enemy has been able to convince us that there is no God <laughs> or he, I don't even think he have a problem with us believing that there is a God yeah. as long as we doubt his power and his ability to mm -hmm. be God in our lives and in our situations. Yeah. And so the, 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 the demons, they all know, they, they know. You have to know the truth in order to, to twist it, to make it a lie. <laughs> what, what are you working with? You got to have something to work with yeah. in order to, to, to create a lie. And so knowing the truth, knowing that mm -hmm. God deserves all the worship, knowing that without him, nothing was made that was made. The <laughs> principalities, that's what we just read. Yes. Every single thing, the Every. devil. Every, even the devil. See, that's hard for some people to, to, to swallow tonight. Why would God even make the devil? It says he made him for him. That's right. That's why we say the devil is God's devil. Because mm. he created all things. Somebody get that in a moment. So principalities and powers know that God is their creator. Now, we're going to move on. Look at uh, Acts chapter 19. I wrote this in my book. I said a lie would be in, unemployed if truth wasn't the employer. Mm, that's good. In other words, a lie wouldn't have a job description if truth wasn't in existence. Mm. So in order for there to be a lie, there has to be truth. Mm -hmm. So the lie can be told mm -hmm. concerning the truth. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. <laughs> mm -hmm. So look at Acts chapter 19, verses 11 through 17. You have a teaching anointing tonight. I want the people of God to be edified and built up through the scriptures tonight. Look at this. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, mm -hmm. so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them. And the evil spirits went yeah, out, out of them. them. Are you listening to me? Look at 13. Then certain of the Vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits. Mm -hmm. The name of the Lord Jesus saying, uh, we assure mm -hmm. you <laughs> by Jesus whom Paul, Paul preached. preached. Right. We don't, we don't know him. <laughs> We don't know him, but this is who Paul preaches about. Yes. And so uh, in that name, uh, and that scripture says, verse 14, and there were seven sons of one Sceva and a Jew and chief of the priests, which did so. And the, watch this, and the evil spirit, underline this, if you missed this in times past. And the evil spirit answered Answer and, and said, said, Jesus, I know. Right. Stop right there. Yep. The evil spirit said, get me tonight. The evil spirit said, 
Jesus I know. In other words, I know Jesus. I'm an evil spirit. I know Jesus. Somebody needs to get that tonight. The evil spirit says, I know Jesus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look at what else he said. And Paul, I know. Mm -hmm. I know Jesus. And I know Paul mm -hmm. because Jesus is in Paul. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. So I know Jesus mm -hmm. and I, I know, know Paul, Paul. Mm -hmm. but I have absolutely no, no idea, idea who, you, who are. you are. That's right. Because Jesus ain't nowhere in you. I don't know you. I don't recognize you. <laughs> Watch it now. And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them. Now it says one spirit. Now this is a whole bunch of spirits. It says one spirit. One, e <laughs> one evil spirit jumped out of the man and jumped onto seven sons of Sceva. Watch this. And overcame them and prevailed against them. So one evil spirit whipped seven men so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. Stripped them up. <laughs> you know we, we, in, in modern day vernacular, they're crazy. That one evil spirit ripped their behinds and, and caused them to go crazy. And go, <laughs> can you crazy. imagine this? <laughs> one evil spirit whipped all seven of them. They ran out the house butt and naked and they were wounded. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Look at verse 17. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus, and fear fell on them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. Oh my God, isn't yes, that amazing? Yes, yes, I, I, I'm, I'm, I wanna pause for the pause right there and, 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 and talk about um, a, 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 an evil spirit being able to identify. Yes, that's what is he? What is he identifying with? What, 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 what happens when when an evil spirit is confronted with us, who, 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 who does he see? Yeah. <laughs> does he, does he, does he recognize the Jesus in us? Yes. Yeah. Or are we like these sons? That was, uh... <laughs> because we, we, you, because we are so used to the form of godliness. Yes. I have, I have, I have met people in, in, in public places, the food yes. store, the parking lot, the gym. Mm -hmm. And you just trying to have a decent conversation. Good morning, and they 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 all in the spirit. <laughs> and it looks it looks it looks deep to me. Right, right. But how will it look to a spirit, an evil spirit? What what would he oh. say? <laughs> what what will he think? Yeah. The evil spirit say, "I know Jesus. I know. I know him. Mm. To know him yes. is to know him. Right. I know him, Paul. I know Paul. But who? But who are you?" <laughs> <laughs> I know who you are. You are a vessel available for me to whip your butt <laughs> and send you crazy. Oh my God! That's... And so, a lot of times, we we have this form of godliness. Yes. And others can't tell who we are. <laughs> we seen this prophet one time that was saying something about tongue kissing Jesus. It, it was the most despicable thing I've ever seen or heard. <laughs> But people were, were were falling down and sowing their seeds into him. Wow. They were they were excited about the man of God. <laughs> but what happens when you come face to face with an evil spirit? <laughs> Jesus, I know. <laughs> Paul, I know. But who are you? you could fool some people? Yeah. But you can't fool God. Mm -hmm. And you definitely can't fool those evil spirits that know God. <laughs> Oh, my God. This, this is some deep stuff. Tonight. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Look at uh, Matthew chapter 8, verses of 28 and 29. Like I said, we're teaching tonight, but I love teaching. The Bible says in uh, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7, and all of thy getting. Get understanding. Get understanding. Wisdom is the principal thing, chief thing, most important thing. And with all of thy getting, get understanding. Mm -hmm. Now, Matthew chapter 8, verse 28 says, And when he was come to the other side into the country of the uh, Gergesenes, there met him 
two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce, so that no man might pass by mm -hmm. that way. Mm -hmm. Man, those demons, those men were so demon possessed, folk wouldn't even go back. Man, no, you better not go. <laughs> you, know what yeah. mm -hmm. you better go to the other side of the street, man. Don't go over that mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. You know, but they, 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 they might have a bad day and want to <laughs> jump y'all says, hey, nobody went that way. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? <laughs> Look at verse 29. And behold, they cried out, saying, now, look at the spirits now. This is what the spirits said to Jesus. That's the point I'm trying to emphasize. What have we to you, Jesus, thou son of God? Right. Identifying who he is. How they knew he was the son of God? Because they know him. They know who he is. <laughs> and that's how they know who we are. Woo! My God. If they don't see him, if they don't see the characteristics of Jesus in us, that they know we're not of him. <laughs> Ooh, that's heavy right there, bro. Mm. What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of God? Watch this now, brothers and sisters. Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? Get this now. So... Devils know there's an appointed time when Jesus is going to torment them. They, they, they know what time it is. They know what time it is. They know what time it is. Oh, my God. That, that, that's heavy to me, prophetess. Watch this now. Let's go back to James chapter 2, verse 19. I hope you're getting something out of this tonight. James chapter 2, verse 19. It says, thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. Kudos. I mm -hmm. applaud you. The devils also believe, and not only do they believe, but they tremble. Mm -hmm. Now, let's put this under the spiritual microscope of practicality. Consider how wicked this is now. Mm -hmm. Providence. Satan and devils know that God is the one true and living God. They do. Yet Satan uses everything in his arsenal to lie to us and influence us to think that God is the liar and is not to be trusted. Mm -hmm. Somebody better get this mm -hmm. tonight. Every lie the devil told you, it was a lie. That's right. And everything God told you is the truth. And no part of it is true. So here's my question now. If Satan and devils know the truth that Jesus is the son of God, even though they lie about it, they say he never existed. They say he was just a prophet. You know, even in, uh, was that Matthew chapter 16, you know, Jesus mm -hmm. say, who the son of man say that I am? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, he say, who do men say I, the son of man, am? You know, and then they say, well, some say you, Isaiah. Yeah, you know, you Jeremiah, you one of the prophets or one of them other prophets, you know. Mm -hmm. And then it, then he says, who do you say I am? So so there was opinions about who mm -hmm. Jesus was. Mm -hmm. So when you think about that, demons and the devil know mm -hmm. that Jesus is mm -hmm. the son of God. Right. So if they know, mm -hmm. then what's wrong with us? Mm-mm-mm. My God, now you got to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 to understand what's going on. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, look at verses 3 and 4 says, But if our gospel be hid, this is the Apostle Paul talking, mm -hmm. it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world, who is that? Satan, mm -hmm. hath what? Blinded the, the minds, minds of them. Of them which believe not, mm -hmm. lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the, the image, image of God, God should shine, shine unto, unto them. them. Mm -hmm. So people of God, there's something that's blocking the minds of the people, causing them not to believe, mm -hmm. causing them not to in them so they can receive revelation and benefit from it. 
Somebody mm -hmm. needs to get this tonight. Watch this. So look at this now. There are two basic categories of non-believers. Okay. You got those who are lost and those who are found but still act lost after salvation. Let me say that again. You have those who are lost. Mm -hmm. Then you have those in route to a renewed mind. Are you listening to me? Mm -hmm. That's why Paul said in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, he said, I couldn't speak to you as spiritual, but as carnal, because you're divisive right now. One mm -hmm. of you talking about, I'm with Apollos, one with Paul, and then and some say, you know, I'm with Cephas, you know, mm -hmm. so, so you're still immature. Mm -hmm. So I can't speak to you from a spiritual standpoint because mm -hmm. you're carnal. But okay. you're saved. Mm -hmm. That's what carnality is, a saved person who acting like they're not saved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't mm -hmm. even be carnal unless you're a Christian. That's right. Everybody see mm -hmm. that? <laughs> but anyway, let's move on here. So, 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 there are those who are lost, never repented and received Christ, and there are those who have to act loss after salvation in route to a renewed mind. So stated differently, you have unbelievers and you have unbelieving believers. Now, let's break this down. Let's go to Mark chapter 9 verses uh, 23 and 24. Mark chapter 9 verses 23 and 24. Watch this. I thought this was interesting. Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Mm -hmm. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, this man was sincere. He cried out with tears. What did he say? Lord, Lord I, I believe. believe. Help yeah. out my unbelief. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. So this father said, in essence, people of God, Lord, I do believe. He said, Lord, I do believe. Mm -hmm. Please help my, mm -hmm. or please help me overcome my unbelief. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. This is not a contradiction. This man said, Lord, I do believe. But I'm asking you to help me overcome my unbelief. Mm -hmm. Now, if anybody uh, feel led to criticize this father, hmm. think about how many blood-washed believers that you know hmm. struggled with unbelief since the pandemic. Hmm. It was one year ago that the public school system shut down. We're here in uh, Clayton, Clayton County, uh, which is uh, Jonesboro, where we live. But the Atlanta area is Fulton County, you know. And so it was March of last year when we had to go virtual. Mm -hmm. So it's been a whole year, yeah. this pandemic. And I didn't say pandemic as uh, I was saying it wrong and meant pandemic. No, it was a pandemic. Mm -hmm. 